Thanks for dropping in. In this quick video, I'm going to demonstrate how to merge objects within Prusa Slicer to prepare them for 3D printing. Then I'll apply that technique to assemble a custom bin for a rolling storage box. This technique will work for any slicing software as long as it supports precisely placing and merging objects. But before we start, what does merging actually do? Let's say we have two cubes that we want to print as a combined object. We could simply take one of the cubes, place it inside the other, and then slice it or prepare it for print. And at first this looks perfectly fine, but as we dive into the layers, you'll see that it actually prints the outer walls for both objects, as well as the infill. Not only does this waste time and plastic, but the final print is not going to look good because it's trying to dump extra plastic on the seam here where it just won't fit. So what do we do about that? Well, you just select both objects, right click, and select merge. Now when we slice the objects, you'll see that there is one continuous outer wall in one single section for the infill. Let's take a look at something that's a little more complex than boxes. These are two different projects that I found on Thingiverse. All I had to do to get these to work together is I brought them both into Slicer, I merged them, and then I used the move controls to reposition the pieces so that they lined up sufficiently. Now, when you're dealing with different parts like this, chances are they're going to be the wrong scale. So, of course, you'll also need to select the parts and probably rescale them so that they fit the way that you want them to. And that's not going to work at all. The real purpose for this video, though, is to show how to merge objects together in order to make custom bins for the rolling storage box. What we see here is a demo file that comes with the rolling storage box project on Thingiverse. I don't actually recommend printing this file because it's got every single possible bin piece, but it's a good demonstration of all the options available. The first row here is the standard bin style. It's just a very simple design with thin walls. To the left of the standard bins are divider inserts. You'll see there's two main divider types. There's these wider divider types that run all along the length of each bin, and there's these dividers that run along the width. These come in two different sizes. One size perfectly matches the size of the standard bin, so you would uh, completely merge it together and the divider would would become a solid piece of that bin. This other size is slightly smaller. It can act as a sliding insert. So if you're not quite sure where you want the dividers to be, you could print these separately and slide them into the bin. Speaking of sliding, the next bin styles are the sliding bins. You see they come in two parts. There's this frame that's open on both sides, and then there's these inserts. Um, that look a lot like the standard bins, but they're just slightly smaller once again, and they can slide into the frames. The sliding dividers that I just mentioned can be merged into these bins to, to make a permanently affixed divider. The next style is similar to the sliding style. It's a drawer. It's open on one side, and the inserts are also open on one side. So you see they're capped over here and open over there. If you use this style, you should be very careful because even though these insert pieces look very similar to each other, there are some subtle differences. Obviously one side is closed off. That's pretty clear. The center ones are exactly 40 millimeters wide, which matches the standard width of all of these pieces. But this last row right here is slightly shorter than 40 millimeters. That's because it needs to butt up against the wall on the containing bin. If you were to merge together an insert that used the wider size, then the drawer would not fit in the frame at all. This next style is for magnets. You see that it has little holes that fit three millimeter by six millimeter cylinder magnets. The internal geometry of these bins do not match the standard bin. So, in addition to the pieces that have the magnet holes, 
there's also the spacer bins. And the spacer bins are for when you want, well, space between the magnet pieces. Finally, we have these ribbon style bins. They have these horizontal slots to shove a ribbon in that can act as a pull tab. Much like the magnet bins, they offer spacer designs that match their internal geometry. Now that we know all the bin styles, let's construct a bin. These are all the files for the magnet style bin. I hit arrange in order to pull them all apart so I can see what we're dealing with here. The order that it pulls them apart is not particularly logical, so we'll need to pick and choose what we want out of this kind of mess. I want a magnet on one end, a magnet on the other end, and I want a whole bunch of spacers to make a particularly large bin. I don't want any other pieces, so let's get rid of those. And let's make this bin a total of five bins wide. So that looks good, but now we need to get them all in alignment with each other. I mentioned before that, by default, most of these pieces are 40 millimeters wide, and that's going to be very helpful when placing these. This print bed is 300 by 300 millimeters, so I know the exact center of it is 150 by 150. So I went ahead and positioned it by typing the values directly into the slicer. Now, I could use math to know that on one axis, this is going to be 150, and on the other axis, it's going to be 110. Um, and that works, but I find it easier just to position this, just eyeball it roughly, and then go into the numbers here and round them so they are the correct value. That's particularly valuable when we get to these end pieces. That's because they are not 40 millimeters wide. They're 40 millimeters wide plus the length of this tab. And the tab sizes uh, change depending on which uh, bin we're talking about. Fortunately, all the widths are an even number. So when we round it, it will still work. I'm just going to place that very close. Place that very close. That's 150 by, it looks like, 67. Yep. And this is 150 by 233. Okay. These are all pretty closely aligned, um, but they're not merged yet. So we're going to select all the pieces. In Prusa Slicer, you would use uh, the command tool on a Mac. I believe it's... It's either shift or control on PC. I'm not exactly sure, uh, but it doesn't hurt to experiment. Obviously, different slicers use different controls. So if you're not using Prusa Slicer, uh, you'll need to figure out how to multi-select and then how to get to the merge menu. So in this case, I just right click and select merge. So now we have one solid piece. But let's make this more interesting. I've now pulled in the divider files that we mentioned earlier. The divider files are a little more difficult to place. Um, they are standard widths. This is uh, 10 millimeters wide, and this one's 40 millimeters wide. However, their depth is not the same as the bin just due to their, their natural geometry. So when placing them, you pretty much just have to, you have to place it by eye, by sight, and you can get pretty, pretty close that way. So this looks like it pretty much got it, at least within the resolution of my printer. So that should be fine. And when I click on that piece and take a look at what value um, that comes out to, that's 148.15. Depending on how your slicer positions things or where you place this larger bin, your value might be different. But that's something to start out with. And this piece will have the same, um, the same value for that axis. So once you've got one, you've got them all. Let's make a couple copies of this divider. Once again, I'm going to copy that 148.15 and apply it to these other dividers. 
and I haven't really finished where I'm going to place these, but it's close enough that I'm going to perform the initial merge. One really nice thing about merge is you can still move individual pieces around after the fact. So this menu on the right lets you select items and then move them. And like most slicers, Prusa Slicer gives you the option to move items along a single axis. So I can select this divider, click this move tool, and just grab this one axis to slide without ruining my careful positioning. So I'll put that one there. Let's get this long divider and have it just butt right up against this one. And let's get this divider and have it cap off that. Now this next piece is coming through this magnet hole and that's no good. So when you are placing these pieces like the dividers, especially if you're in a non-standard uh, bin style, you do need to be careful about that. So don't place anything that, that blocks the other geometry. The backside should be perfectly fine. It's mostly the ribbon holes and the magnet holes that could become a problem. And that looks good. Uh, we now have a custom bin that is in no way like any of the pre-assembled bins from the project. And if we slice it, we have one unified wall going around and everything looks solid. So as you can see, this gives us a whole lot of options, not only for this project, but for loads of other projects. It's sort of a digital version of kit bashing, where you take little bits and pieces from modeling kits and assemble them into unique, unique combinations. I hope you found this useful and will apply this technique to your own projects. And if you create your own custom rolling bin, I'd love to see what creative combinations you've made for the bins. Until next time, thanks for watching. Um.